done one of these, hey? Yep. Do I even remember my opener? Who knows? <laughs> We're about to find out. Okay. Um, cool. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Kaya Cast. My name is Brad. I'm joined on the couch from I t- our team today by the lovely Kyra. And joining us for this, uh, I think it's episode 33 of the Kaya Cast, yes. is Anna Olafia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Anna is, among other things, a dancer, choreographer, performer, all... R- yeah, I mean, you're a fairly all-round um, performing creative, but there's more to it now, uh, especially. Um, before we get into that, though, what do you think people miss out on? Obviously, you've got your, your Fleur de Cap nom. There's lots of exciting things happening. What do you think people miss out on in an intro? Like that, you know, the, that uh, you feel is an important aspect of who you are, but doesn't get inclu- wouldn't get included in an intro. Oh, my word. Like, that's such a hard question. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but it's a good one. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I think it's to say, like, I'm a performer and that there's that side mm. of me and then I'm a creative, but I'm also, like, super passionate about, like, helping people. And I'm just trying to figure out, like, that part of me is, like, feeling unfulfilled. So I'm just trying to figure out, like how that part of me can be fulfilled. So that's that's the other side of me, performer, creative, and that part that wants to help people. Well, that's a beautiful segue as they go um, into talking about, by the time this comes out, we will have have launched the brand. So tell us about, I'm going to let you announce the name and what's going on. What is happening right now in, in our lives? So we've probably, yeah, we've released the Playroom company, which is the company with the product, which is the app, which was the idea that started all of this. Um, Do you want me to talk about the app? Yes, let's get into it. What is the Playroom? So I had this idea to create an app. I think I had the idea in like 2019, but I was like, yeah, that would be cool. You know, like imagine. And then as I've graduated now, I'm going like, hey, there's still a need for this. And that's when (laughs) I came to you and basically my the aim is to build an app that is kind of like a a linkedin instagram Mm -hmm. situation for creatives where we can meet collaborate and create cool stuff i mean yeah that's essentially what it is and the playroom is the company or the community that we're building to be on the app Mm -hmm. beautiful Mm -hmm. um i think let's go in a little bit more into i mean why you think something like this is is needed and it's obviously something we can we can get into in a little bit more depth but what is yeah what is the problem at its core that that we're trying to solve well i mean cape town south africa anywhere in the world that like for us isn't like america or the uk or something like it's really hard to have a creative career it's really difficult that's where like struggling artists comes from and all that <laughs> but for me I look at Cape Town and I'm like, oh my word, like why aren't we the capital of cr- like the creative world? Like why aren't we? Because in my opinion, we've got unbelievable talent in every like discipline. So for me, I was like, okay, how can we get organized? Essentially, like I keep saying that mm. to you. I'm like, we have all the talent, we're just super unorganized. And how can we organize mm. ourselves to capitalize on it better mm. and to make this a place where we can have thriving creative careers? We don't have to leave our home. We don't have to mm. leave here yeah. to have the careers that we all dream of having. Like we all like, mm. I mean, if you followed your, your dream and have like, you're in the creative industry, you know, you have big dreams. And yeah, it's like making Cape Town a place for us that we can, you know, reach our dreams and fill our potentials. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I mean, obviously, uh, long-time listeners of the Kaya Cost will, will will know, or anyone who's kind of followed what we do, you know how very aligned that is with with what we what 100%. we do at Kaya. Um, and I think, it, like for me, it's it follows this trend of there's so many, there's just this groundswell at the moment, or at least it feels like to me, of young creatives who are tired of the status quo and tired of exactly that of the fact that you know i think we all know i mean like if we wanted to start you know listing people collectives brands in cape town that are 
producing creative work that is world class and and different and innovative and um, really pushing boundaries socially and culturally and and all of those things. I mean, we'd be here forever. Mm. But and I think there's 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 a lot of us who are really tired of the fact that the narrative I feel has been and is that it's really hard, as you said, to build a creative career in in Cape Town and. Uh, I've always really disliked the ethos of like, well, to succeed as a creative from Cape Town, you have to get to Joburg and then you have yeah, to 100%. get out of the country. And like, nah. And I think that's I think that's the ethos of, of a lot of people, a lot of young people in the industry, which is really exciting because, it, you know, it feels like the right time for something like this to be happening um, and, and for us to be able to start figuring out what those things are. I think it's a really cool way to activate the community you know the app as as the kind of mechanism to do it with but to actually just have these conversations which is what we're starting to do now around what are these big issues what are these things that are stopping us from being able to do this how can we you know work together to to solve those problems change the change those situations um and yeah, I think it's a, it's a really exciting time to just be approaching everything with a very problem-solving approach. You know, we have this opportunity now to be seen all over the world and we need to take that opportunity. What do you think is is the biggest, and I'm going to push it to Kyra as mm. well, but what do you think is the biggest limiting factor right now um, for the growth of our creative industry? I mean, sure. Go Collaboration. Kyra. Like, Also, I just think like, um, just what I've noticed actually within Joburg is there's a lot of creatives that are keen to work together. Mm. And I think that's something that's missing within Cape Town. It's let me give you a hand. I have the resources. Okay, I'm a photographer. L like you need content. Let me like provide that content for you. Do you know what I mean? Like literally it's what we did. So like that is like a fantastic way to stoop bold so i think like what we need now is just more collaboration more teamwork if that makes sense mm. what do you what do you guys feel yeah i mean mm. like on that i think it's also like sustainability because sometimes mm. you'll be having like a really good moment sorry mm. <laughs> um sometimes you'll be having like a really good moment mm. and for me it's like you're in the show you're in the musical mm. and it's all good for you right mm. now but then right afterwards so like your ego is constantly going like this yeah, as well yeah, yeah. so it's like if we just drop that all together and go like i'm in my moment right now i'm mm. in the show but what am i doing after this how am mm. i going to sustain 100%. a career yeah you know what i mean and it, it happens in all creative fields like you're booking all the jobs you're doing what mm. you need to do but you don't know where the next thing is coming from so mm. it's like if we are able to mm. like go like it's okay that i don't know what's coming next yeah. because here's my community waiting for me to come out of this moment and oh, grab so me true, up yeah. mm. and go like, let's, let's yeah. do something. Let's figure it out. Yeah, let's figure it out. Like the whole community is just going like, I'm, I can't wait for her to finish that big moment because I'm so excited to do this little thing with her mm. Mm. or whatever it is. Yeah. And in any discipline, it works like that, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah. I think those are both, both great points. And for me, what, what kind of comes through both of them, A, there's the obvious of like, community like we yeah. just you know it's it's uh, all of those cliches like d divided we you know <laughs> united we stand divided we fall stronger <laughs> together yeah. but like it's cliche because it's true it's and real. you know like it is true you and it's why i always like we have to start thinking about creativity as a business more and mm. i think with the proliferation of ai coming out now human creativity more and more becomes the value um as like AI robotics, all of that stuff, you know, evolves over time and it's happening so fast. Oh, yeah. The value of skills and the ability to like do something to a process, something that can be trained like that mm. is, is increasingly less valuable because very, very quickly mm. robots and AI are going to be, be able to do it better with mm. less, you know, less fallibility, more accurately, all of those things. So mm. What matters now is human creativity, human mm. problem solving. And so I think it's already been, you know, it's always been the best. The last few years have always been the best time to be like in the creative industry. But I think that is happening, you know, increasingly so. But 
to take up on that opportunity and the fact that the creative industry is going to capitalize dramatically over the next few years, we have to be able to capitalize on that opportunity and, mm. and build creative businesses that, like you said, are sustainable. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it calls also to the like, collaboration side of things. Like mm. the only way this business works mm. is fundamentally through collaboration. We're yeah. bringing different skills to the table to 100%. you know, achieve a common goal. And I think we need to be more in the headspace and and like given spaces where you get the resources and the understanding to build good creative businesses. Mm. The creativity side of things is actually, and I, I think it's something that's really hard for a lot of creative people to realize, like the creative side of it is not your like ticket to the, you know, it, like mm. it's kind of your, it, it lets you play the game. But like that's all it like your talent. I've said something like your talent lets you play the game. That's all it does. Your ability to monetize it, build a sustainable business, um, you know, and and survive off it depends on your ability to make it into a good business. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's marketing, it's branding, it's like finances, it's all of those things because the creative on its own it needs an infrastructure to support it. And I think that for me is what like translates through what both of you said is like, mm. how do we create an environment where, you know, creative professionalism is um, fostered and mm. supported and, you know, and, and given space and opportunities to learn. I think that's that's the biggest um, thing is just increasing access and giving more people the opportunity because the more there are of us, the more there are of us. That's why like, accountants all have you know everyone's got a trade union or a mm. professional body that represents them collectively for the best interests of the collective and yes we do have those in south africa for for various things but like we needed to really have a community um that is you know really passionate about supporting the growth of that community and i think that's what you know with the playroom we've got this huge opportunity to build you know take that groundswell of of energy and ethos in that direction and actually give it somewhere to to live and play mm. you know which no. is such play? a nice, little nice. Like, <laughs> love it um, <laughs> and i think that's like that's a cool way to move into talking about the you know the values of the brand and of the playroom and uh, why we chose playroom and um you know, the ethos and the vision, because I think we've, you know, kind of said from the outset, we know now, like vision and value driven brands are what people connect with. And, and they're the most sustainable long term, because mm. you, you don't have to give you're not giving of yourself all the time. It's, it's, you know, it aligns with what you believe. So talk, yeah, talk us through the like, yeah, the values, the, the mission and, and why, why we went playroom, all of those things. What's the brand? Okay, well, I'll start off by talking about like how important it was for me to be empowering creatives because I just think that empowering creatives and giving them the opportunity to decide where their career goes is super important to me because it kind of sucks going to like thousands of auditions and it's not mm. up to you. You don't get to decide when you get to be creative, mm. when you get to get in the room and be creative. So it was a part of it was like empowering people to be creative whenever they want and create whatever they want. Um, Playroom, the name comes from the idea that we are the players mm. and we're also the kids that never grew up. We're all doing what we <laughs> wanted to do when we were kids. And so, so this is the room for us to play in. And that also like in collaboration with all the thriving creative spaces mm. in Cape Town or wherever um, to get into the room and play. Mm. And just yeah, connect the players and have a play date. <laughs> exactly. Um, I think that's yeah, so well put. And you know that is yeah. I think what we often you know it's an also an important reminder. I think when trying to build a creative business of the fact that you know one can get too stuck into that and then you're not playing enough. And yeah. and well, I think yeah. that's something that we want to you know always encourage and encourage yeah encourage you know yeah play around discourse and around these conversations and um yeah i think it's such a beautiful sentiment of 
of a space. I think like, yeah, it's it's something that I only have positive like associations to as a playroom. Like it's, mm. it's like fun and toys and yeah. I mean like. I'm in this industry because I love collecting toys. These are toys to me. Like, yeah. and, you know, I, I love playing with them quite yeah. literally. Um, and I think something else that, that we've chatted about is the importance of connecting the different parts of the creative oh, industry. Yeah. Because I think it's, you know, a lot of the actors all, all know, know one another other, and the all dancers. the musicians know one another mm -hmm. because they're small, small communities. But none of those things exist in isolation and often the difficulty in yeah. making something bigger happen comes in the fact that there's not as much interconnection between mm. those different sectors of the creative mm. industry. Um, so, yeah, I mean, talk to me about that sentiment and where that came from and, and, yeah, how you want to, or what you want to come out of that. Well, kind of how I see it is like, when an actor meets a director and a script writer's in the mix, like, you can put on a show, but like, do you know who's going to like your show? Do you know who's going to take videos and photos of your show? Like the more creatives that meet each other, the mm. more we can create mm. because 10 dancers in a room are pretty useless until the choreographer walks in. Mm. And it's about connecting those people. Mm. Um, obviously like the dancer and the choreographer is mm. like quite an obvious one, but what happens when the dancer meets the musician? Yeah. So like this makes me think of something I've done before where I choreographed a dance and I had um, a friend, Garnet, shout out Garnet. <laughs> um, I asked him to play the trombone and I created the movement around what he played. Cool. And that's like for me, what like I'm so proud of that creation because it was mm. like this collaboration. Mm. And cool things don't exist without us all meeting each other. That's just what mm. I how I feel. I'm like more people need to meet and yeah, studying in a musical theater college where everyone is so multi-skilled. Mm. I'm like, this girl writes, like, writes beautiful songs. I'm like, well, you need to meet this guy. Like, you need mm. to meet Jono. You need to make a song with Jono. Oh my word, mm. like, how do you not know this person? Like, mm. I just want everyone to meet so everyone can fulfill their creative desires. Yeah. Yeah, because, I don't know, when also when the onstage people meet the offstage people, you can put on a show. Yeah. And like, you can create an experience for people in Cape Town. Yeah. Like, you mm. can create things. Yeah. that bring us all together as a community. But, yeah. I just have a question. So, be, I just want to, like, know your journey before the app, um, like, where you were, like, and also just kind of what inspired that. Like, do you have, like, an exact moment where you felt like you were sitting and you were like, this needs to happen, or do you feel like it was, like, a, a journey? Well, I mean, at the end of matric, I was not going into the arts, I, in January, before university started, I was going to UCT to study business science or whatever I was going to decide. It was <laughs> like, I obviously didn't care enough. Mm. And then I kind of said something like my dad and I were having a conversation. We were just like, okay, like just take a gap year. Like, I feel like it's not out of my system yet is what mm. I was yeah. saying. Like it's not out of my system. And then when I took that leap and did it, I think after like three weeks, I was like, oh no. <laughs> I'm going into the creative professions. Like yeah. I can't, there's, there's yeah. no ways. I just, I knew. And then when I had the idea mm. about the app or I just kind of thought like, it's so scary going into the creative world. Like I would rather get a degree because it's safer and mm. you know, find whatever nine to five, like I can do that because it felt safer. And then I was like, started to brainstorm ideas on like how I can make the creative industry less scary to me essentially like oh. i was like how can i make sure like i have more power and control in creating this for myself because also something i never wanted was to like go into this and then have to go study afterwards no. and yeah so i had the idea and then I, while i was studying i was like it would constantly come into my head like okay cool mm. when i graduate and when i finish i need to do this because if i feel this way i can't imagine how many other people feel this way yeah, yeah. it's so scary one like of them. i'm I mean, one of them the day i graduated mm. i was like what was i thinking <laughs> like, <laughs> i have nothing to do today what was i thinking like this is awful mm. but yeah it was it was for me about like making it feel a bit safer mm. and just empowering myself and all the other creators around me to take that deep and do what I want to do. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it started. It was mm. about making it like feel safer. There's a community and you can do things like you can start something. You don't have to wait to be chosen to do something. That's incredible. Yeah. I think uh, 
a cool question for us to to explore because I think it's it's really interesting. It's like, I mean, we've obviously we've been chatting quite a lot about you know how important it is in app development, like user experience being you know increasingly user focused in terms of what do creatives in Cape Town need? What mm. are those? Um, what are those things? And I do want to get into that, but I want to kick it off by going, what do you think is going to be the biggest like oppositional factor to people getting on board with the playroom or well, yeah, with the company? I know it's a cut question, but it's a good one to think about. Yeah. I think, I think it, like it's very appealing to, to creatives that have had struggles and go like, whoa, like I could take this help. Mm. I think, people who have a groove mm. and have their people mm. are going to be like, I don't need this. Like I'm fine. Mm. I think that like mm. those people might be like, I don't really need this. Yeah. Like I've got, a, I've got quite a good setup, but I don't know. It's quite important for those people to get involved and be part of the yeah. community. So we can all start looking like I've yeah. got my setup. Yeah. I've got mm. things yeah. going for me, but yeah, I, I would, I would probably say like, like people who are already in a groove and mm. like yeah and have have things more figured out but that being said like everyone is going where's the next opportunity yeah. coming mm. from like no one is yeah no one's safe <laughs> yeah you might be yeah. slightly more mm. you, you might know, be established more yeah, or, or whatever yeah or but i think you're right um and i think like to speak to that as well it's so important that those people who are a bit more established and do think, oh, no, I've got it all a bit more sorted out, is acknowledging that like creativity always favors the new and the young and the creative industry always favors new and young and innovative. And if you are a bit more established and more, you know, I think, you know, comfortable, I think that if you are one of those people, that is really, really fucking dangerous. And mm -hmm. in the next couple of years... If you if you aren't open to, I mean, I think the the when I think like the oldest, you know, like people who've been in the creative industry for years and years and years and years and have consistently been at the top of the industry, and I mean, there's, there's I mean, just in music, there's so many examples I'm thinking of, but like people who've been in bands for decades and decades, mm. and it's like their but that that longevity comes from continuously working with new people and younger people and not the same people all the time because otherwise especially if you're good and you're established you just surround yourself with a bunch of yes men who don't help you don't push you and even like quite quickly you're going to become washed up and irrelevant Oof, that's so um, nice, yeah. and i think that becomes the danger of mm. attaining a level of moderate success in an industry like cape town where you then go I'm sitting pretty, you know, I'm I'm comfortable. I don't really need the these young kids and their community and whatever. It's like, you might not now, but if you don't get on board now, you're going to need it in a couple of years and it's not going to be as easy. Um, and yeah, like your value as a creative comes from your ability to evolve and, and deal with mm. new things and work with new people. And I think if you can't do that, excuse my French, but like, fuck off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, it's like you said, bro, we're yeah. literally at like a critical point now where like everything is changing mm. and it's so important to evolve and move with the times. And that's why I think like everybody will be on board, to be honest. Well, I mean, that's I, like yeah. what I like to hope. I hope so as well, mm. because I think the more people that like are interested in being in the community, the better it will be. Yeah. I mean, Otherwise, I, like what I really don't want is for it to be like another little niche group of people mm. that mm. only work with each other. Yeah. I, I really want it to be for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I really want everyone to like get benefit from it or to meet new people. I want everyone there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I really hope so. But that that would be yeah. really cool. I think, yeah, the I think like because we're focusing on like inclusivity, mm. accessibility yeah. and yeah. just mm. like solving people's problems. Um it's one of, I mean, it's the ro uh, big part of the role that I'm playing in the Playroom company is with my degree in information systems and understanding how apps get built is understanding for something like this, especially where it's like a social network fundamentally with, with uh, a lot of core functions. 
it's got to be so user friendly and mm. user focused and that's why we're going to spend a lot of or relatively a lot of time just engaging with the community and engaging with the industry on like you know we think we have and i think we've got a pretty good idea of what a lot of the problems are but we really really want to just talk to creatives so if you are a creative please like check out playroom company on mm. instagram and and we're asking all sorts of questions everywhere about everything please go and give us your insight give us your thoughts give us um yeah tell us what are the biggest problems that are are facing you what are the things you need solved the most and and give us ideas on how to do that you know i think we're coming into it very open-minded as to what we're going to try to do um and you know we want to just yeah it's we're not too fixated just yet on what those features look like we're just interested in engaging with the industry and finding out what those features need to be yeah. um which which i think is really exciting and i mean we've been saying in in a lot of the content and it's a great line is like we're building the playroom for you and with you mm. and i think that's really important as a kind of core ethos is that's what it is it's for you and with you so if you don't get involved you know it's not going to be as good as it could be and we really want your input um and i think that's that's really important and i think it goes back to the the real core of what the playroom is which is to empower creatives mm -hmm. and i think that's a sentiment that so many people are on on board with now yeah. um which is so exciting because we have such a cool opportunity to really build off that and i think there's a lot of interest in cape town creatively at the moment i 100 think you know yeah. i think we all share the yeah. sentiment of kind of like why is cape town not broadly considered a creative capital of mm, the world yeah. um and you know what there's going to be people in other countries in other places who think the same thing about their city and back you yeah like, yeah yeah good, same page great yeah. let's let's we'll, like we'll diversify bring the to you. Yeah. um i think what's what's so important for us to be able to do is do that instead of like there's kind of you know area based capitals that are quite established and just you know that's where the film or the music industry is in this continent or whatever and that's just like i feel getting outdated and mm. outcompeted and access is improving constantly to all of the tools that creative people need to do whatever they need to do the barrier for entry is getting lower and lower and the opportunities are just you know getting greater and greater and i think we can also tend to get into a bit of a scarcity mentality of like and I, I mean it makes sense if you're in the creative industry it is like it does feel very doggy dog because like you said you know there's you can go to a million auditions and then not be able to um you know actually yeah you don't get to decide where you get to be creative and i think like for musicians it's very similar like there's so many but there is so much opportunity. I think th a big problem is we just don't know how to access it yeah. and make the most of it. Yeah. Um, and, and I want to talk about that. What do you, both of you, think is what we need to do as a... I mean, we've talked about collaboration. We've talked about, um, you know, those things. But tangibly, how do we set about trying to solve these problems practically i know we've got that mm. but i think like what are the what are or do i want to rephrase this question um how can we increase like the accessibility to like yeah like that, what yeah. things do we need to increase accessibility yeah. to you know increase conversations around increase education around what are the what do you think is the the single kind of knowledge area maybe is a, a better mm. way of putting it that we need to improve mm. within the creative industry so that we can start doing those things a bit better building better creative businesses something that i have in mind is just i would say um individuals that have the knowledge like okay i'm a photographer and i and and i've studied photography so i understand the complexities and the technicalities of cameras shooting all of that okay they are they and i host a workshop mm. 
I host a workshop um, and allow anybody, everybody to come and learn those things that like I've learned because now I'm increasing the accessibility to it because also I had the privilege to learn these things. So it's I have the responsibility to then teach it to, uh, to others who are keen mm. to learn. And yeah. that's like, I guess, something that I have in mind. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah, mm. 100%. Yeah, I also think like with our idea of having like playroom events mm. Mm. where they can come in all like different yeah. shapes and like mm. some of them can be more fun and relax and mm. meet everyone. Mm. But I think there's also a space to start having like conversations or like, I don't know, like a topic to discuss mm. and start hearing from everyone mm. and start understanding like where different creatives need to, mm. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, then even like getting a whole bunch of photographers to yeah. meet up and you're there having conversations and mm. speaking to them and like almost like just bonding over the understanding of how tricky it is. And, and it's like a very cute thing. When for like just a bunch of creatives that have <laughs> yeah. are creative in the same way, like we talk about these things and it's just this level of just understanding and funniness like... Like, oh, yeah, you, your camera so operates really shitty in low light. Oh, fuck. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. it's so nerdy, but it's so cute yeah. and wholesome. Yeah. And I think, I mean, what it does, it makes you feel really held and seen 100%, and understood. And 100%. It does give you this immense sense of like, oh, shit, we're all in it together. Yeah. Like, mm. every time I have conversations, especially with, like, people I admire in creative business or whatever, where, you know, they'll say something and, like, it's, it can be as simple as, like, you know, I'm just so fucking overwhelmed at the moment. I'm yeah. not getting to any of my emails. I'm not, I'm like, oh my God. Like, yeah. so when I feel like that and I feel like I'm just the worst because mm. of it, it's like these people who are much higher up and more successful and, you know, whatever that looks like, but, you know, objectively from a career perspective also deal with this. So like, it's okay. Like mm. they understand, yeah. like I have people that I can, you know, that, that understand me on that. And I think that's, it's so powerful, um, again, in building your industry is that you are in it together. Mm. And, you know, I think having those conversations and it goes to like why we need to reduce the clickiness and mm. improve the community and the collaboration is like having those conversations makes you more kind of strong in how mm. you feel. Mm. Go for it. Um, you know, like you're more confident in your in your um in the standards you set, in the policies you give out, because you can, you know, it's it's as simple as that. Like, once you know, I've seen it happen so many times with us. Like, once I have an experience with someone else where they're talking, uh, it can be silly shit, like deposits and stuff. Mm. Like, sometimes when you haven't had any of those conversations, you're like reluctant to ask because you don't know if you really deserve it. But then you go and have a conversation with a bunch of other, you know, more established, less established mm. um, creatives in the same field. And they're all just like, no, dude, you've got to do this. Yeah. You can then go out going, it's just the industry standard, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm I'm just doing the standard. And then they go, no, well, it isn't. You go, well, it is. Like, because I know these people for whom it is the standard. Yeah. Hello. I know. <laughs> and <laughs> um, to, to add on to that, it's like, for me, also, like, meeting and seeing all these people, whether it is on the space of an app or, like, meeting up in person mm -hmm. at workshops or events, it's like, you see that and your ideas start to become, like, more real because mm. say you've written a script and you go to an event with like and there's a whole bunch of actors or you see on the app all these available actors you go like wait a second i can actually do this so like what i would say is like i'm hoping to create a space where all those ideas that you do have like you take that risk and you do it mm. because you'll see all these people around yeah. you going mm. like i'm here to help i want to be a part of that yeah. like mm. yes like please i'm available like mm. please put it on please do it please have that music gig and let me sing a song. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just like having that space when you're seeing all these people and knowing all these people going like, hey, there's space for my idea here. Yeah. like, And people are more keen than I think people realize. Like to hop on. Yeah. Like, mm. And like just be part of things. Like I think people are more keen. They just don't know about things. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's why the app is just so valuable because it's like, oh, now... I know about these things and now I'm going to show up and just offer myself. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think for me, it, it comes down to something I think we said in another video or mm. I don't remember what I was thinking about it, but I think creativity is one of the few skill sets and 
also I want to say when I say creativity, I think creativity often gets limited down to the creative disciplines. And I think more so, more and more, if you are, there are so many industries where your creative ability is going to set you apart from everyone else in yeah. your industry. Yeah. And I, like, I mean, like medicine, engineering. I mean, engineering is a very creative field. Um, coding, mm. super creative. They all you know, are. And I think people need to embrace that side of things more. Yeah. But creativity is one of the few skill sets that are like, in my mind, that are exponential. Mm. In that when you put two creative people together, it's not a summing of creative skills because your creativity interfaces completely with theirs. Mm. And every facet of an idea that they have, you're going to have a whole bunch of ideas on. And, you know, which is not as true in system like systematic or trade based industries or you know it's it's not quite the same creativity is so boundless and the more creatives you put together the more ideas you get exponentially i think that's why often when you have too many creative people in the room you don't get anywhere because it's just too much mm. but i think you know the ability to to collaborate and for creatives to work together is with i mean creativity pushes society progress you know it's such a huge part of political conversation it's it's everywhere and i think yeah having spaces where that is more celebrated and encouraged and and supported is where we need to go as like the fucking human race yeah 100 um, yeah, so like great job anna um <laughs> yeah. but yeah i think we need to wrap mm, things up yeah. shortly. But what do you think? Is, yeah, what is your one message to the creative industry right now? Mm. Um, I would say we can't do it without everyone being involved. And although, like, I back my idea and I'm super excited about it, I cannot do this without everyone. So I just, I just want to say, like, let's come together and yeah, let's do it for each other. Mm. There we go. Well said. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Kaya Cast. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out Anna, check out the Playroom Company. All of those links will be <laughs> in the bio. Like, subscribe, share it with your friends. You know the drill. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Sick.